Now, that's what I kind of want. So if I move this way, he does that attack that way. Unfortunately, what I'd like him to do is go through that animation cycle once and then stop. So also, I can kind of keep pressing the space bar, and it starts him back at the beginning of his animation. I don't really want that either. I want him not to be able to change anything until he finishes this animation. So I need yet another variable to keep track of that. I'm going to say can attack. I'm going to set that to true. When I press the spacebar, I go, hey, can you attack? If can attack is true, then I'm allowed to do all this stuff. And I'm going to set variable can attack to false. So now what should happen is that initially I'm allowed to attack. If I'm allowed to attack, then I say that I'm not allowed to until I finish this animation. And then the part where I set it back to true is when the animation ends. Now, one tricky thing is that I don't know which of these sprites I'm currently on. So if I'm in the walking sprite, I don't want it to stop. It's only if I'm in one of these two attacking sprites. I need to use an animation end, which is under other. And I need to test which sprite I am. It turns out you can find out which sprite you are by checking your sprite index. Sprite index is a built-in variable, sprite underscore index. And that has your current animation uh, sprite. So whichever sprite I am is contained in this value. And I can ask, hey, are you, let's see, m attack left? So if my sprite index is m attack left, then I'm allowed to attack again. Can attack goes back to true. And I'm going to just change into the standing one, I think. So if it was attack left, I'm going to change into monkey stand left with my regular 0.5 animation. If my sprite index was m attack right, Once again, then I'm allowed to attack again. Can attack goes back to true. And I'm going to change back into the standing right. Monkey stand right, B to 0.5. If I'm any of the others, so if I'm standing or if I'm walking, I don't really want to change anything here when their animation sequence has ended. I'm just going to let them go. Blam, monkey attack. All right, is there anything else I need? Let's see. Ah, there's uh, one little problem. If I'm in the middle of an attack and I press the left key or the right key, that's an issue as well. So I'm going to make it so that if I'm in the middle of an attack, I'm allowed to interrupt it by moving left or right. It's up to you if you wanted to do this. So I'm going to make it so that if I do press the left key and there's nobody there, I'm going to allow him to attack again. And attack, true. And I'm going to do that for the right as well. I might want to do that in release left and right as well, since this also, also alters his sprite. The main thing is I don't want him to be able to press space multiple times and have this happen over and over again. There we go. So a lot of animation work for all of that to happen, you may have noticed. I had to create a couple more variables. There's a lot of tests in left and right. I have to deal with animation end and figure out when he's an attack. So this is one of the things that makes it all very tricky. The other part is making sure that all of your sprites are exactly the right size. So notice this sprite goes from 12 to 62. Left and right is 5 to 55. When I attack left, 
This is very different, 25 to 75, 10 to 60. I just have to make sure that these distances are exactly the same um, length from each other. So this is a difference of 50 between 10 and 60, difference of 50 between 25 and 75, and then the exact center of that is at 50. Whereas this one, halfway between 5 and 55 is 30. If I didn't do that, as soon as my monkey got close to one of these walls, he might put his uh, part of his collision into the wall. 